Florence made landfall as a Category 1 hurricane at 7.15 a.m. at Wrightsville Beach, hurricane. Florence rolled ashore in North Carolina with howling 90 miles per hour winds and terrifying storm surge early Friday, killing at least two people and trapping hundreds more in high water as it settled in for what could be a long and extraordinarily destructive drenching. More than 60 people had to be pulled from a collapsing cinderblock motel. Hundreds more were rescued elsewhere from rising water. Others could only wait and hope someone would come for them. As the giant, 400-mile-wide hurricane pounded away, it unloaded heavy rain, flattened trees, chewed up roads and knocked out power to more than 600,000 homes and businesses. A mother and baby were killed when a tree fell on a house, according to a tweet from Wilmington Police. The biggest danger, as forecasters saw it, was not the wind but the water, the storm surge along the coastline and the prospect of one to three and a half feet of rain over the next several days that could trigger catastrophic flooding in a slow-motion disaster well inland. By early afternoon, Florence's winds had weakened to 75 miles per hour, just barely a hurricane and well below the storm's terrifying Category 4 peak of 140 miles per hour earlier in the week. But the hurricane had slowed to a crawl as it traced the North Carolina-South Carolina shoreline, drenching coastal communities for hours on end. The town of Oriental had gotten more than 18 inches of rain just a few hours into the deluge, while Surf City had 14 inches and it was still coming down. Hurricane Florence is powerful, slow and relentless, North Carolina Gov. Roy Cooper said. It's an uninvited brute who doesn't want to leave. Cooper said the hurricane was wreaking havoc on the coast and could wipe out entire communities as it makes its violent grind across our state for days. He said parts of North Carolina had seen storm surges, the bulge of seawater pushed ashore by the hurricane, as high as 10 feet. The rising sea crept toward the two-story home of Tom Copeland, who lives on a spit of land surrounded by water in Swansboro. The water is as high as it's ever been, and waves are breaking on my point, which is normally grass, said Copeland, a freelance photographer for the Associated Press. Trees are blowing down in the wind. Nothing's hit the house yet, but it's still blowing. In Jacksonville, next to Camp Lejeune, the Triangle Motor Inn started coming apart. Firefighters and police fought wind and rain as they went door to door to pull people out after the cinderblock structure began to crumble and the roof started to collapse. They formed a convoy to an emergency operations center, according to the Jacksonville Daily News. A gust of 105 miles per hour, 169 kilometers per hour, was recorded at the Wilmington Airport, surpassing the power of Hurricane Fran two decades ago. Farther up the coast, in New Bern, about 150 people waited to be rescued from floods on the Neuse River, WXII-TV reported. The city said two federal emergency management agency teams were working on swift water rescues, and more were on the way. Florence made landfall as a Category 1 hurricane at 7.15 a.m. at Wrightsville Beach, a few miles east of Wilmington and not far from the South Carolina line, coming ashore along a mostly boarded up, emptied out stretch of coastline. It was expected to begin pushing its way westward across South Carolina later in the day, in a watery siege that could go on all weekend. For people living inland in the Carolinas, the moment of maximum peril from flash flooding could arrive days later, because it takes time for rainwater to drain into rivers and for those streams to crest.